वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस टी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग थर्ड पेपर नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दिस इज मॉड्यूल ट्वेंटी एट थॉमस डी क्विंसी एंड इट इज रिटन बाय डॉक्टर अंशुल चंद्रा इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर डिस्कसिंग four important poems of thomas de quincey now by the end of the lesson students should be able to understand who is thomas de quincey what are the themes of his writing what is the suspiria de profundis and autobiographical impressions in his essays as far as biographical facts are concerned date of birth 15th august 1785 and the place is manchester england his father was known as thomas quincy and mother elizabeth pension his wife margaret simpson and they had five sons and three daughters he died on 8th december 18 59 He received his education at schools in Bath and Wingfield At age of 10 he was sent to grammar school He ran away from Manchester Grammar School and after returning home enrolled at Oxford but left without completing his degree over there His literary career is also very interesting He started a job as an editor of Westmoreland Gazette, a Tory newspaper in 1818. Charles Lamb, the great writer, prince of English essays, introduced him to London's journalistic circles. He was invited to write for London Magazine, where Charles Lamb was a regular writer. In 1821. the first half of confessions of an english opium eater appeared which really made him a successful and established writer the major themes of his writings are britain's imperial conflicts in asia and northern africa he wrote about criminal violence he wrote about philosophy theological history confession internal struggle with one's self and autobiographical descriptions suspiria de profundis that is an important work by thomas de quincey it is a collection of short essays it was published in 1845 and it was regarded as a sequel of confessions of an english opium eater which was published in 1821 In fact, suspiria de profundis is a Latin phrase which means sighs from the depths. It was considered as the supreme prose fantasy of English literature. Theme of the essay is confessions. Thomas de Quincey focuses on the spiritual effects of the suffering and agony as it develops the spirit of man. Suspiria was incomplete. in its original publication later on he got it completed after de quincey's death among his paper list of 32 items was discovered as the complete suspiria another important work by quincey is dreaming introduction of the whole work suspiria de profundis and de quincey foregrounds the importance of dreams and their potentiality He describes the power of dreaming. He said, "I quote from him: The machinery for dreaming planted in the human brain was not planted for nothing. It throws dark reflections from eternities below all life upon the mirrors of the sleeping mind." So, in this work, the power of dreaming enhances the potential of human mind. It was emphasized by Quincy. it is a way of finding hidden truth within him that would normally be repressed it is self exploratory instrument 
The work that really made him famous was the palimpsest and human brain. Palimpsest is derived from the Latin word palimpsests, which means a parchment of other writing surface on which the original text has been effaced or partially erased and then overwritten by another a manuscript in which later writing has been superimposed on earlier effaced writing you know this was the definition given by oxford dictionary the palimpsest is considered as a metaphor in the middle ages these parchments were created from vellum which can be recycled traces of writing disappears from the sheet but actually it leaves its marks permanently in the same way as in our mind the past is never erased it has remained there in the memory what thomas de quincey said i'll quote his lines he said if once a man indulges himself in murder very soon he comes to think little of robbing and from robbing he comes next to drinking and sabbath breaking and from that to incivility and procrastination unquote he compares the human mind to a palimpsest he writes the mind is but a palimpsest of human brain where everlasting layers of ideas have fallen upon your brain softly as light they are not dead but sleeping there is none of passion or disease that can scorch away these immortal impulses unquote again de quincey writes i quote yes reader countless are the mysterious handwritings of grief or joy which have inscribed themselves successively upon the palimpsest of your brain they are not dead but sleeping human mind also recalls our past memories it shapes his adult life quincy would never escape from the pain of childhood and his sister's death now you see in this particular work what de quincy again and again just emphasizing that dreams are there memories are there they cannot be erased if they are not conscious they are there in the unconscious level those memories are part of your life because of those memories you grow another work that we are going to discuss by de quincy is livana and our ladies of sorrow livana the ancient roman goddess who oversaw the birth and education of children the word livana is derived from the latin verb as is still it the italian verb livare he saw in his dream that livana is communicating with three other ladies and those are sisters are ladies of sorrow the eldest of the three is named mater lacrimarum our lady of tears she is the mother of lamentation the second sister is mater suspirium our lady of sighs and the third sister is mater tenebrarum our lady of darkness now memorial suspiria de quincy recalls life's miseries foreshadowing and anticipation he sees past as the mirror the past viewed not as the past but by a spectator who steps back 10 years deeper into the rear in order that he may regard it as a future unquote he describes death of his sister elizabeth and problems of his life in this essay that is why we call it partially autobiographical the problem and the pain of his sister's death could never be erased he was always there with his past recalling and forgetting forgetting and recalling but it was always there according to him all the experience of past is simply not an event but it is actually effective in our present he describes i quote death we can face but knowing as some of us do what is human life which of us 
is it that without shuddering could face the hour of birth unquote now some critics have commented upon de quincey and his works i quote menequis who wrote in 1976 de quincey's quest for self substantiation but historicizes this quest finding in it both a public and a private struggle against disorder and discontinuity unquote miller and baxter they said the totality of de quincey's writings as an autobiography but shows less interest in them as expressions of consciousness than as texts conditioned by the exigencies of the press unquote so in this module till now we have gone through the major works of thomas de quincey we have known his personality about the writer his literary work to sum up in detail i will again tell you about the important points first of all let me talk about suspiria de profundis we know that it is a collection of short essays published in 1845 and a sequel of confession of an english opium eater it is considered as the supreme prose fantasy of english literature the theme of the essay is confessions quincy focuses on the spiritual effects of the suffering and agony as it develops the spirit of man quincy was very much attached to his elder sister elizabeth and that's why he describes her death memories hallucinations and dream vision in this autobiographical work now another that is dreaming we know that it is the introduction of the whole work of suspiria de profundis and in this work dreaming de quincey answers some of our questions too de quincey foregrounds the importance of dreams and their potentiality he describes the power of dreaming i quote the machinery for dreaming planted in the human brain was not planted for nothing that faculty in alliance with the mystery of darkness is the one great tube through which man communicates with the shadow and the dreaming organ in connection with the heart the eye the ear compose the magnificent apparatus which forces the infinite into the chamber of the human brain and throws dark reflections from eternities below all life upon the mirrors of the sleeping mind unquote now you see what quincy wants to tell us quincy wants to tell us that dreaming is not created by us it is in our scheme and it is very very important we should consider its importance dreams are like realm of enlightenment they are the key to understand reality it gives human being a world a different kind of world where they may live in harmony with nature and their childhood they can dream of childhood they can dream of good things the power of dreaming enhances the potential of human mind as it merges with the infinite it is a way of finding hidden truth that would normally be repressed so it is the exploratory instrument so this definition of dream is a unique that is given by thomas de quincey and most of the people they do agree with it another one that we had discussed i will sum up that is the palimpsest and human brain again in a philosophical way quincey considers palimpsest as a metaphor in opening lines de quincey addresses the masculine reader but later he shifts his attention to female reader as well and he understands and tries to mention both of them human mind also recalls our past memories and quincey describes through this essay that the incidents of childhood may haunt a person it shapes his adult life and that affects his future as well 
Next is the Livana and Our Ladies of Sorrow. Of all the essays of De Quincey, Livana and Our Ladies of Sorrow is most admired one. Leon says, I quote, The whole of this vision is clothed in a prose so stately, intense and musical that it has been regarded by some as the supreme achievement of De Quincey's genius, the most original thing he ever wrote. Uncut. The essay starts with the description of Livana, the ancient Roman goddess who oversaw the birth and education of children. As a child, De Quincey had to suffer lots of pain. He explains his grief and also says that his personal experience is not unique. Many people experience the same thing, but the uniqueness is there in the expression, the way De Quincey explains that. In next stanza, he says that often he saw in his dream that Livana is communicating with three sisters, our ladies of sorrow. Three sisters they are of one mysterious household and their paths are wide apart. But of their dominion, there is no end. Them I saw often conversing with Livana and sometimes about myself." Unquote. So you can see that the autobiographical element is also there and he considers all these three sisters and Livana's conversation in his regard as well. Memorial Suspiria. In this essay, De Quincey recalls life's miseries, foreshadowing and anticipation. In the opening lines of the essays, he remembers his bitter experience because his, we all know that his child life was not very good. He lived on the streets of London in poverty and hunger. He suffered a lot and there was a 15 years old prostitute who helped her. He could never forget her. So he mentioned her as well. Later in life, he often saw her in his dreams and called her Anne of Oxford Street. He sees past as the mirror. Now, I will just end with the comments of the critics about De Quincey and his work. According to Elena Kles, De Quincey was in many ways a replica of Coleridge. What De Quincey seems to have most closely imitated was Coleridge's style of life. The mysterious doomed nature of the ancient mariner whose curse is to proclaim his failure. Opium visions were De Quincey's best way of achieving this dark sublimity." Unquote. So we have just seen and enjoyed De Quincey's writing. They are beneficial for us as well as they answer some of our questions. For further, you can just consult the text, e-text that is available on EPG Padshala. Thank you.